Uh, we're doing a little drawing today. Um, we're going to be exploring landscape and uh, landscape drawing. Up until this point, we've done some portraiture and you know features of the head and the loomis and the three quarter and the profile and some of these different things. Uh, and so we're going to break out um, into a new area again. We're going to so we're going to be dealing with landscape. Um, when we when we're drawing landscape, we really have to pay attention to depth. And depth is created by three things uh, with drawing. Well, I guess we could say four things. But um, so the first thing is size. As things go further back, like these mountains, they get smaller. They go further. Away. They, so the the diminishment of objects in terms of their size helps to give us the feeling of depth. And it's the same thing if we look here, if we move this over, we've got the clouds. Again, these clouds are going from bigger to medium to small to smaller. That will help increase the feeling of depth. So we have size. We also have overlapping. So this hill overlaps, that hill overlaps, that hill overlaps, that hill. These trees overlap those trees. You know, these trees here along the ridge line overlap those. This grass overlaps that. So there's overlaps everywhere. This cloud overlaps that, that over, you know, so forth and so on. Um, so overlaps become, you know, very important. And then we have contrast. Uh, in other words, the jump from light to dark. There's more jumps of light to dark here. And they get softer or they, they're not as far apart. The further it goes back, again, more contrast here. This jump to light to dark is far more than this jump to light to dark. Uh, more contrast here. This jump to light to dark is more than anything uh, on here. And so contrast becomes important. And the last thing is detail. Uh, we're going to see more detail in the foreground. and the you know This is the foreground, but it's in shadow. But more detail here, and there's supposed to be less going further and further. So the detail starts to fade as we go back. And same thing here. So we're going to use um, size. Uh, we're going to use um, overlapping, we're going to use contrast, we're going to use detail to create the illusion of really deep space. And we're even going to exaggerate it more. So um, we're not going to do a photorealistic rendering of this. Uh, we're not going to take 12 or 16 hours just to you know make it, make it look like a photograph. But we're going to get enough of the information that it will look very, very naturalistic. It'll look representational because we're going to use those different concepts we just talked about. In terms of what I'm going to be using to create the drawing, so I've got some materials here uh, for blending. Uh, now I may not use all these, but I'll, I have them here just in case. For the blending, we're going to be using uh, cloth that I'll keep over here. Uh, we're also going to ha we have um, stomps uh, that uh, that I might use. I don't use them near as much, but I, we'll have them here just in case. Uh, these are solid paper. You can buy them anywhere, and they're blending tools for, I use them specifically for charcoal. Some people tr try to use them for uh, graphite, but um, I don't use them for graphite. They just, they, graphite looks dirty when you shove graphite into the paper when you, and that's what this does, it shoves it deep into the paper. And so if you use this graphite drawings, it can always just make your drawing always look a little dirty, uh, which is not good. So I use it only for charcoal. I'm gonna put these over here again. Uh, some of the other things, I'm, the third thing I'm going to be using that I'll probably be using the most uh, for blending is uh, tissue paper. So this is just, you know, just regular tissue paper, nothing special about it. Uh, you could use a chemise. Uh, I'm not going to be using a chemise, but you could. Um, I have a couple, but I almost never use them. Uh, this right here, I'm going to be using this in case I need any straight lines. Uh, so this is just a... This, I think it's a 10 inch, uh, but you could use anywhere from an 8 inch to a, up to a 10 inch drafting triangle. Um, this is a 45 45 drafting triangle. This actually might be a 12. No, it's not long enough for a 12. It's probably a 10. Uh, but again, this is just, I'm going to use this for the, the straight edges to create straight lines when I need them. Uh, in terms of the drawing, we're going to be uh, executing the drawing in charcoal. So, oh, let's go ahead since I've got these here. Let's talk about this. So I've got these erasers here. I'm gonna. I've got a collection of eraser erasers. I usually only use a couple. I don't normally use this many, but just in case, you know, I'll have these around. Um, so if you, 
you know, of all these erasers, the one that probably be the best to have would be the kneaded eraser. This is just a kneaded eraser. It's, it's malleable. Uh, people use them all the time for drawing. You can pull it apart and squish it back together. And as you tap this, this actually pulls up material. It's it's slightly sticky, so it pulls up the the stuff. Now, not very sticky in your hands, but it's if I do this, it'll pull the the charcoal off the paper. So I'm going to be using that. I have a pink pearl eraser just in case. Uh, you can use a little more aggressive uh, erasers with charcoal than you can with graphite. So I'm going to have my pink pearl around. Uh, this is just a plastic eraser. Uh, it doesn't have to be Prismacolor. There's a lot of companies that make plastic erasers. Uh, they have less friction. They're a nice eraser to, to have. Uh, they're a little less aggressive than the, than the pink pearl. This, will, this is more aggressive. This is a little lighter touch. These are just, again, I don't know if I'll use these, but I've got them around. These are white uh, plastic erasers that are in uh, these. They, they're almost like mechanical pencils for erasers. Uh, this is a thicker one here that I'll put right there. This is a thinner one. Uh, you know, you can see it's, it's, it's much thinner than that other one. Uh, and so a lot of times I'll use these in, for portraiture, taking out little highlights and stuff like that. But just in case I'll use it, I'll put that there. This is a gum eraser. This is the oldest eraser type. Uh, they're usually about this color. Sometimes they're a little more gray. This is a little bit more on the yellow side. But uh, these, are just so, these are just pure rubber uh, resin uh, from the rubber plant. Um, or tree, I guess, depending on who you talk to. Uh, but again, it's one of the oldest eraser types, and they're the most abrasive of all these erasers. So I'll use that if I have to. And again, you could, I could, I could use Brillo pads on paper with charcoal. I could, I could tear stuff. I could do all kinds of stuff. Charcoal doesn't care about what the surface looks like. It goes down pretty, you know, very nicely, no matter what the surface is. Uh, very different from graphite, that's very much, you know, sort of the high maintenance. Uh, of the of the um, art world, if it's not just the way the the graphite wants it, if the if the uh, paper is messed up at all, the surface is, is messed up at all, it it'll show it. It'll show it. You know, it won't look good. We'll just put it that way. Um, now on to our. Uh, I'll put these guys up here too, just in case. Uh, maybe I'll just get this out of the way so I'm not pulling from the side. Put this up here out of the camera. Put that up there out of the camera. Um, so what we're going to be using for in terms of our charcoal. Now I've got, um, so I've got a bin of charcoal. Charcoal, you know, a lot of times I'll have, uh, you, you'll, you'll know with these small pieces. So this is just a bin full of, of different charcoal pieces. Um, and some of it's what we call compressed charcoal, like this. And some of it is vine charcoal. Uh, I'm going to keep this around just in case, but... I just want you to understand that everything in here is either vine or except for the white. There's some white rolling around in there. And I guess there's a piece of sanguine or red. But all the rest of the stuff is either vine charcoal or compressed charcoal. Uh, and I'll just keep this around in case I need it. I'll put it out of the camera or close to out of the camera right over there. What I'm going to be using the most in here is going to be, okay, so this is vine charcoal. This is a small piece of it. This is in, this is the same thing, but it's, it's in a, an extender. So this has a little cuff, and this is split down the middle, and I can open this up, put a piece of charcoal in it, and then that will secure it. And so that's what I've done here. Uh, it's just being held, and this is an old device. It's been around for a couple hundred years, and probably even further than that, in some in some way, shape, or form. And they may even go back, you know, much further than that. Um, but pretty simple. You know, I could imagine they could split a piece of bamboo, and then with a piece of, you know. Or even you know some other type of wood, and then you know just put a little cuff on it or tie it or some sort of you know mechanism. Again, it, it, it's a very very primitive in, in many ways. I, I like it because simple works. Uh, but this is just a piece of vine charcoal. Vine charcoal is literally grape vine that's been turned into charcoal. Okay, and the advantages of the vine charcoal. And willow charcoal is very similar. Uh, it's been a long time. I use them interchangeably, but I don't do enough charcoal to know the nuance. There's a slight difference. One of them goes down slightly differently. One of them goes down, uh, has a little bit more grit to it, if, if I recall. And then one uh, wipes away a little easier. So with this vine charcoal, and charcoal gets dark very quickly. 
uh, but with vine charcoal, even if I make a very dark line, like so, I can you know wipe some of it away, and then if I need to go even lighter, I can go ahead and erase quite a bit of it uh, with the with the charcoal, which is the the good thing. Um, this right here is the difference between this charcoal and this charcoal. This is this is compressed charcoal. So these pencils have charcoal that's like this. It's been taken and pressed under 100 pounds per square inch or more. Who knows how many? But it compresses it. And this is compressed charcoal that are in your in your pencils, uh, your pencil form of, of charcoal. And what will happen is if I use this, um, this charcoal doesn't wipe away the same way that our, our pieces of vine charcoal will. Again, there's my vine charcoal. And again, I, that, that will wipe away quite a bit. And then not only that, once I've wiped it away, I can actually using, I can erase it pretty close to, on the camera it may look like it's gone. I, I'm not sure how much, uh, how good the camera is, but it's just barely there. It's still there because charcoal doesn't come out all the way ever but it's light enough that I could do quite a bit with it. Whereas this one will never lighten as much as that one. It just has more staying power. So the difference between the compressed charcoal is first off, it doesn't smear as much. And second off, you'll never be able to, you get richer darks with it, but they stay. Like if I start building it up with, with uh, this vine charcoal, it, it builds up. And if you sneeze, that will just kind of almost disappear. Anyone who's grabbed, anyone who's grabbed charcoal out of, a, out of a fire and tried to write with it knows what I'm talking about. You try to write on something and again you sneeze and, and all of a sudden it's 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 gone uh, and again so this is that's a vine charcoal and again that was a kneaded eraser that I was using if I use one of these uh, a lot of times it'll lighten it a little bit more uh, and if I if I wanted to see what's the most I could lighten it I could use this uh, uh, this eraser and if I can't get it out with that, it ain't coming out because this race is pretty, pretty aggressive. So again, um, those are the uh, the different drawing materials that I've got. The last one that I've got, this is a different type of charcoal. It's called Conte, uh, Conte crayon, crayon. It's basically charcoal mixed with a, a certain sort of dark clay, I believe. But anyways, the important thing is it's fired in a kiln, just like you know, a, a clay plate or something, a ceramic piece. And because of it, this is a little harder than any of the charcoals. The charcoals always have a soft, sort of a soft mark, uh, a softer mark. Whereas this guy, if you make a mark with him, he just has a sharper mark than I, um, can't really tell it right there. Those look about the same. But if I tried to come over here and sharpen this up to a nice edge, I can keep a nice sharp mark. If I take this, it's always just a little softer because of the nature of charcoal. So, and it's hard, may be hard to see on this, but it's it's a nice little you get a nice little bump out of it. Uh, by bump, I mean a little bit more edge control. That way, you can get some sharper edges, you can get some duller edges, and all that good fun stuff. So that's all the different uh, materials we're going to be using. Uh, for this drawing, put that over there. I guess I've got some of my tissue paper over here. Um, let's go ahead and define the borders of our drawing. And for that, I'm going to be using my my Conte. So we'll go ahead and define the borders. Like so. Bring this over here. Bring my pencil over to that. Like 
so. Um, and this will be the drawing that I'm going to be making. To give us a nice border to see what what it now obviously it's going to be a lot on the smaller side um the smaller side is perhaps overstating it um or understating it but it's about an, an eight by ten ish it might even be like a 7.5 by 9.5 but something like that um drawing that we're going to be making i just need to get some of these I'll just leave my suppose. All right, so leave that there. Where's my other stuff? Oh, there we got that there. We got that there, and we've got the cloth. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and start the to draw uh, some of this. Now I've 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 marked off some different uh, things I'm using to track parts of the drawing and so I just went ahead and I I did some you do this with estimations uh, I was doing a little bit of measuring and so this is sort of where this hilltop starts and this is where the hilltop stops you know um, we, we made something like okay this is this so we simplified this really this is this big cloud coming up like so you know, we're just making it like you know just very very simple this is I can't put that on there that I think I think we're done with the with the with the drafting triangle so we get that out of the way but this is this big cloud when we just squared it off it comes over down and over so it came over and then we came down and we came over and then this is this whole set. So again, we're not we're trying to simplify this into its most simple forms. This actually has a little bit of the you know so it stretches here on the bottom, and it comes up. And then there's some far distant clouds after that back here. This is the basic angle of the mountains. Obviously, there's more detail to them than that. But so this is what we're going to do. So we're going to do a very simple drawing. We're going to put a little bit more information than what we've got here. Uh, I'm going to use the hardest, um, the hardest compressed charcoal pencil that I've got. The hardest meaning that it'll be the lightest. The softer the pencil, the darker the mark. And this is going to be a sketch. We don't want it to be, you know, super dark. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to have this mountain comes down. Actually, kind of does this. Like, so, like about like so. All right. He's going to come over here a little bit more. Like that. This then comes on. From behind here, this drops, and this comes down through here, and this then goes here. Now, if you have two parallel lines, try to break those up. You never want to leave two parallel lines. So we're going to go ahead and make this change direction a little bit, so if these aren't this aren't exactly parallel. And we want that. That's going to be better. Uh, this thing comes down here. Actually, it's behind there, so it overlaps a little bit more. This comes down here. And then this has the far distant hills that come down through there. Okay. Looks like I cut a little bit of this off in the background, but that's okay. Um, this then, you know, we have... The distance, we're going to look for this little footprint 
if you will, the trees. And so the footprint is the furthest back here. And then it starts to come forward a little bit because it, you know, there's this little, little bit of a you know, small little clump of trees there. And then this comes over here. And so this is the basic tree line, the foot of it, the footprint, if you will. And then we've got. The, uh, the the grass and shadow so we've got our grass and shadow doing something about like something about like so okay and it maybe seem very very light but we're you'll see why in a second we're we're gonna go ahead and do some reductive drawing and so with the reductive drawing it's gonna blow out quite a bit of what we've got and so we want to keep just the bare minimum of information. So we've got the where the tree line stops. And if I wanted to, I could even come in here um, and we could block we block some of this in. The trees, certain trees are a little taller, some little trees that are not. Um, little trees that are coming up, other little trees are coming down. And again, we, so we could just again block some of this in. Like so. Again, if we wanted to, these are just supposedly the tops of the trees, these little different shapes, supposedly. Okay. Um, and again, we have the distant mountains we're not worrying about, or hilltops. Well, you know, it looks like they're hills that you have probably some mountains here further on, on back. Um, and then we've got the clouds. Now the clouds have got to be really careful because if we get too dark in the sky, it's game over. Because remember, we can't array. We can only erase so much um, of this of this sky stuff. So we're going to go ahead and start that. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to when I said reductive drawing, that means we're going to put down a ground. So put down a ground. We're going to take this charcoal. Um, and all I'm going to do, oh, this is the extra hard stuff. Okay. There's basically in these uh, vine charcoals, there's and or willow charcoal, there's hard, medium, or soft. Um, some companies will make just uh, medium or soft, but the idea is that, you know, that there, that there is a difference in the hardnesses depending on where you're at. Um, that's good to, to know because I think in the sky, I think we'll come back to this because again, the, the reason that we use the, the vine charcoal mostly in charcoal is that you can get very light tones because again, remember you can wipe away some of this plus you can erase away some of this and that will make it so that we can work with it much more easily. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to try to get away with it, get rid of a lot of the white of the paper. So with drawing, uh, drawing many times can take us a lot longer than painting because with painting we're using you know one inch brushes and we can use a two inch brush we can and so we can cover vast areas very very quickly and you know if we look at this we got a very small tip so um, we're going to try to this uh, technique of reductive drawing, we can cover a, a, just a much much larger area very quickly. Um, the only thing about this when we're doing this type of drawing is we have to we have to build this up. We have to build it up slowly. Uh, if we don't build it up slow, we have to do it in layers because it uh. It doesn't go down completely smooth. Even if I was working with charcoal dust, uh, which can be extraordinary to work with, uh, anyone that's worked with it knows what I'm talking about. Um, you have to you have to layer it. So uh, now I didn't. I don't think I said what paper I'm using. This is just uh, 
300 series Strathmore out of Strathmore's uh, drawing books. It's like their 11 by 17 pad or 14 by 17, something like that, somewhere in that size range. Um, 300 pound, it's a medium surface paper, not the smooth. Uh, so it has some texture, but not a whole lot. And especially not for charcoal. Usually a lot of times people will use uh, charcoal papers that have a little bit more tooth to them. Uh, and I certainly have. There's just, there's something nice. Uh, if I'm trying to get uh, a little smoother texture with a charcoal, uh, sometimes it can be very nice to be using something that's got a little less texture to it. Uh, but again, to, to build this up, we're, we have to, you know, layer it. So I'm going to come in and go over it and over it and over it to finally start to get some layers where we can, you know, start to get, um, again, some values in here, some very quick values. Okay. So... And all I'm doing is I'm using this reference over here. I'm using a little bit of it. I'm not ignoring it, but by the same token, I'm not, you know, trying to do little details. We are not, we do not have 12 hours to work on this drawing. So we have to, you know, be a little bit more where we're implying. We're just implying detail. We're implying shapes. We're implying families of value because we just don't have the time that it would take to try to copy this verbatim. And in fact, that's a, sort of a inclination that every beginner has, and it's really a bad inclination. We want to put just enough in so that it, it, it looks like the scene we're doing. It's, we're doing a caricature of this scene, if you will. So there's just enough information where you go, yeah, that looks like the scene, but we're not copying it every little, every little detail. Um, and what it forces you to do is it forces you to design the areas and simplify and look for the broader bigger shapes and that's what i'm doing right now and that's a very important thing to do as a as an artist whether you're drawing or painting or you know no matter what medium you're working in you know digital or you know or traditional or what have you you need to be able to learn to simplify and look for the bigger shapes look for the basic proportions between the shapes what are those basic shapes and the more you can do that, the better you will be as an artist. Um, and so it's it's like I said, it's key. And sometimes when we when we when we paint, we don't we don't show in our painting that we forget that, and we just start merely copying. So why I'm drawing this, I'm keeping my eye out of focus, and I'm doing my best to simplify because I'm seeing taking my eye out of focus asking myself what are the shapes that I'm seeing uh, and the basic relationships not all the little minute shapes and minute relationships first we have to get the big the big relationships and if those are wrong that means that everything that goes on top of it's wrong and it'd be like a you know like a an architect thinking of the curtains long before he's thinking of the foundation the foundation doesn't work and the buildings falling down doesn't matter how cute the detail was on the curtains, uh, and it's the same thing for the for the artist when we're drawing. We really have to pay attention to these basic relationships. They're going to be the things that are going to drive the uh, the the impact of the drawing. Give it a statement. It's what we want. So. So again, we're gonna we're gonna continue to to put in some values. Now, this is gonna the sky, of course, looks looks very dark, and it is. Um, but the reason we did all this was to give us a little bit of the ability to. I'm gonna go ahead and. Now normally I put down the ground over the whole thing. Uh, with this I want to work in sections. Um, so I'm still going to use the, this, this idea, but again I, I want to work in some sections. We're going to go ahead and see 
Now with this, this is we're smoothing this down, but we're also uh, with this stuff while you're you're uh, blending it, you're also wiping stuff off, and so this again can be a very uh, useful way of keeping nice soft edges while you're while you're drawing. Um, So you know that's that's the whole point of this. Again, we can we can start because it's a clouds and in, in the sky, and we want these soft edges. And again, so we're we're using this to give us soft tones. Now, yes, I could use a my um, charcoal pencil and spend quite a bit of time of nuancing it all with the pencil and and not doing any blending. And yes, I could do that if I really wanted to. And, all that sort of stuff, but what this is is a time saver. Okay, because when you're working in the industry, and I've worked in the industry for over 20 years, you're going to want to find some ways to save yourself time. Uh, you know, so you can't spend 100 hours or 40 hours or, you know, even 30 hours on everything you do. You need something that looks very plausible, or in other words, looks very finished that you can do as quickly as you possibly can. And, and little techniques like this will, will really save you time. I had a uh, instructor once that was doing a graphite trompe l'oeil, and trompe l'oeil was, I hope I'm saying that right, it's French, so I apologize to any French people for butchering the language, but the trompe l'oeil was about um, fooling the eye. So he was doing basically a photorealism. But not only that, Trompeloy keeps things the regular size. So if I was doing this, I wouldn't draw it any bigger or smaller than the actual size of the eraser. So because not only does it look, is it, are they dealing with sort of a, a realism to photorealism, but it's the actual size of the object, from across the room, it can look very deceptive, where you actually think that it is the object that you're looking at because not only is it rendered to look like it, but it's the exact same size. And so, Trompeloi, I believe, if I, I've been told it means to fool the eye. If, again, if I, if there's any people that speak French like, no, that's not what it really means, um, then I, I defer. But I was always in, uh, told that it was um, meant to fool the eye. Anyways, that's, that's not the main part of the story. The story is, is that he would spend, you know, just, you know, four months on, on these paint, these, um, of course, he called them paintings, but they were graphite drawings. I think he referred to them as paintings. Maybe he didn't. Maybe I'm remembering that part wrong. But anyways, there were these drawings. And, you know, whole, you know, all kinds of detail. And again, very large, you know, six feet by four feet or three feet by eight feet. You know, very large drawings. And, uh, you know, he doesn't, he can't spend, you know, a year. And someone could. He talked about this other guy that he knew that did graphite. And he was doing these 10 by 20 sorts of images that took him, you know, two, three, some as many as four years doing it, you know, 12 hours a day. And that was, you know, and that's fine. But, you know, if you're only going to produce, you know, if you're doing that in a career, you might produce 20 pieces. And, uh, you know, there, there, there may be, you know, you may want to be doing more than just 20 pieces in an entire lifetime. And so uh, he would, you know, whereas his pieces would take, you know, three months, four months, uh, two months, things like that, because he was using time-saving devices. Well, just by, if you're able to produce 10 pieces a year and you have a 30-year career, well, that's 300 pieces versus 30 pieces, you know, and, and that's, you know, much different. One will feel like, oh, yeah, there's a body of work, and the other will feel sort of like a novelty. And so you want to make sure that, you know, that that's a part of the, and if you're doing it commercially, now the world of commercial art has changed substantially since I jumped in. 20 years ago, but, uh, you know, time does matter. Time is a part of the equation. The, the, the quicker you can do it, the more money you make. Uh, and so, again, uh, time has to be a, a factor. Now, um, so it's something, that, it's something that you have to be very, very aware of. If you're trying to do it for a career, yeah, time is money. You have to break it down, you know, start to, you know, think about, the art is a product and how long does it take you to produce the product and and so forth and so on uh, and, and that's just the real world idea if you're gonna run a business and so sometimes you know when you and I, and I remember I actually was very much one of these people that well the artists 
in the intangible part of my soul and therefore have, prices cannot even start to compare to what you know the the price that's paid to bring this wonderful piece of work into the world and you know all this sort of stuff and uh, I you know it wasn't until I actually got into the business that you know it was kind of like I don't know it's a little more dollars and cents than that uh, and so you know you, you kind of and that's when you're like okay I gotta gotta feed myself and then of course you get to the point where I've got to feed my my wife and my family and you know again it's it starts to you start to get more creative and inventive when you're like look I can either starve or I can not get any sleep for the next 30 years or I can actually start to figure out ways to save time and so he would he was he had these great time saving way on on on, on uh, graphite and it was very interesting you know he, he was he would use an airbrush to airbrush on uh powdered graphite to to save his uh save him some time when he was working and so little stuff like that is a uh, can can really add up you know the more that you can Okay, so the downside of charcoal sometimes with these little guys is sometimes they can scratch and score the paper. Uh, that was probably done by that harder one. So now I've got I've got this little score in the paper that's kind of there. There's no getting rid of that. I mean, other than if you try to erase it, I could try to come in here and take this out like so. Lighten it up just enough that by the time I went ahead and put some other some other graphite on there and smooth it out that it'll disappear. Um, so again, this is just working with you know what you're given uh, as far as that goes, and that's just a part of charcoal. So again, this is a little dark, so I come in here and try to tap some of that off, try to lighten it that way. Uh, not only that, but this area seems a little dark, so that's good news because that means I can darken around here and this will then start to disappear. So you're going to be ha running into stuff like this as you draw. And, you know, before you, you start to tear your hair out or, you know, break your New Year's resolutions for using all the words that you supposedly weren't going to use anymore, uh, just take a, take a deep breath and start to strategize. Uh, strategize uh, make a make a strategy um, you know start to start to f ask yourself what can I do and so I was like well I could erase it I could lighten it up just enough that by the time I get in there and darken it back down it'll it'll be fine and this then that's what's happening so um, that's it's not and, and things will happen like that throughout an entire drawing so uh, sometimes you can't get rid of them and you're like well that's just that you just have to be very zen about it well that's that's in there that's a part of the drawing now but there's other times we're like nope I, I can get I can get that out uh, and so that's what we were able to do so part of this uh, the reason we're doing part of this is uh, your your uh, draw your your draw your erasers are drawing tools and so I can come in here with this eraser and I can start to again and it also keeps a nice soft look but again, you can start to do some wonderful stuff in skies and things by using your, your, your eraser. Uh, and it's, it's, just, it's just such a nice way of working. Um, I think perhaps this can go a little bit lighter. And again, there's some times where you're pulling out value. There's other times you're putting in value. Charcoal is very much a back and forth, much more so than, than graphite or anything else. And so that's that's really important to know as as you're as you're drawing and painting that, you know it's you know it's it's gonna you, you might you know go into it with a little bit of uh, darker value you might wipe it away and then you're lightening the value and then you're putting some more and sometimes you're doing it to darken it sometimes you're doing it so that it's more even like what I was do, trying to do over here uh, oh I think I blended that and look it's back well that's okay it's I think it's got to go darker there anyways so again. I can get in there. Now I can also use a different blending tool. Now these stumps will blend a little differently than the than the uh, tissue paper, which will blend just slightly differently than the cloth. So that's an important thing to understand as well. That 
even the materials, even the things that I blend with, uh, will, will blend differently. And there's there's some extraordinary artists that, that they, they will keep all kinds of materials around. You know, um, corduroy jeans from, you know, or whatever, corduroy material from the 70s or whatever, uh, and silk and satin and, you know, mousseline and, and you know, you know t-shirts and socks and, you know, they'll blend with different types of paper like, you know, butcher paper or, uh, or um, paper for the printer, you know, printer paper and just all kinds of stuff because they all blend a little differently. And of course you got, you know, your cotton and you know, cotton swabs and all that good stuff. And, and they all, again, act a little differently. Uh, you can use brushes as well. Now, people that have used brushes on graphite, they, they work much differently with charcoal. When you use a brush in, char in graphite, it just blends it really nicely. When you use a brush in charcoal, it sweeps stuff away like a br like a broom, and so it'll start to lighten areas. So it'll blend them, but it also will move away the charcoal. And so some people that have only used a brush and graph are like, "Hey, wait a minute, that's different because yeah, charcoal doesn't stick to itself the way that graphite does. Graphite adheres and sticks to itself, whereas the charcoal is just like you know, it it's basically just laying on the paper, um, and doesn't doesn't move. It doesn't stick to itself the same way." That, that graphite does and for good or bad you know everyone's got their thing but you know with with graphite it can be hard to to to, to um, cover large areas because graphite's not the same as charcoal so charcoal uh, and charcoal you have to so I'm putting like not until you get like third or fourth or fifth layer sometimes you'll start to all of a sudden you'll get this wonderful quality uh, of tone that, that, that's hard to get with any other medium and, and with charcoal the more you go over it the more you beat it up the more you you work it the more you go into it the more the better it looks it's just such an incredible such a wonderful you know material to work with